entropy. It always comes back to entropy. I've been working a lot these past couple of months. I've been going through papers, sorting through to learn everything I can about these entropic materials. My soft matter lecturer is teaching us about hard spheres, their phase diagrams. My physics lecturer is going on about magnetism, which all comes down to free energy, to entropy. I try to relax. There's only so much time for that. I play games. Perhaps a cliche, but I've really been enjoying Dark Souls. A soldier fighting a losing battle through a dying world in an ultimately meaningless attempt to put off the inevitable and maintain order a little longer, even as those that survive slowly go mad. It always comes back to entropy. So why don't I talk about it? You know, while you're all here. Alright, so, developing new materials. This is the basic equation of chemical reactions that gives free energy. It measures the change in energy of a reaction. Systems generally settle into low energy states, so new materials will form with a negative Gibbs free energy. Now if you look at this little term here, that's the change in entropy, the disorder in the system. You'll notice that entropy is negative in this equation, because as we increase entropy, we settle into lower energy states. Entropy always increases. Of course, entropy could decrease if this other term, the change in enthalpy, is negative. But really, even then, entropy is increasing. Negative enthalpy releases energy out to disperse into nearby materials, making them vibrate and move. So releasing enthalpy is increasing entropy, just not in the system we care about. Now this is very useful in predicting a whole host of enthalpically favoured reactions. But if you want to get really special, we need to look at entropy. Specifically, high entropy ceramics. Ceramics are primarily ionic materials. They have a lattice, or rather two sub-lattices, of anions and cations. If you take two ceramics, you can't just mix them together. They'll separate out, form clusters of each ceramic in a multi-phase state. This is because that bonding enthalpy that you get from a beautiful, undistorted, pure lattice is so favourable that the entropy of mixing these materials just isn't worth it. But do we give up? No. We can be sneaky. We can pick ceramics with the same anion, in this case, the oxide anion, mix those together, and BOOM! It still doesn't work. Here you can see where the copper oxide is separated out. But that's okay though, picking the same anion did significantly reduce our enthalpic cost of mixing. We just need more entropy. So we get another oxide, or three, add those in, and now we're cooking. These mix together and we get this lovely smooth single phase. These images show where the elements can be found within the solid solution. They will occupy the same volume in uniform density, with a random configuration. The entropy of mixing all these cations outweighed their enthalpic cost, ultimately allowing it to stabilise, hence the term entropy stabilisation. Now practically speaking, to do this you need a lot of heat. The first time this was done, only five years ago now, they ground up the component oxides into little powders, mixed them together and fired them in a furnace at 1000 degrees Celsius. That's because of entropy's temperature dependence. You need that temperature to overcome the existing bonds. But once it's formed, you can cool it right down and it stays in this single phase material. And we can make more of these, and more of these, and more of these, and I swear a large chunk of the paper I'm writing is just listing the different types that you can get. And they have some promising properties, such as a really high cycling stability, meaning they can be used for ages without deteriorating. 
This is especially promising for battery and catalysis applications. And we've only just opened the door on this new class of materials. There are so many possible combinations just waiting to be discovered. But I'm running out of time, so I'll leave you with one last thought, stolen wholesale from these clever chaps. When you look at the total number of possible binary combinations of elements, only 59% of them are enthalpically stable. This only gets lower for ternary and quaternary combinations, and the margins of enthalpic favorability get smaller and smaller. When you begin to mix unreacting elements together, we can achieve entropy-based stability much faster. In their own words, advances in materials research will be driven by embracing disorder. It is unavoidable.